Hi everyone, Paul Levy with Brownells here. And I'm Keith Ford. And today we're at the Rock Island Auction checking out another gun from the vault. And right here we have something that should be pretty familiar uh, to those Brownells viewers. This is a Colt Model 601. This is an original gun. Uh, sorry, it's not a, a Brownells <laughs> one, uh, but uh, pretty neat to get hands on with one of these original models. Uh, introduced uh, about 1960, uh, so pretty much the very first M16 variant uh, adopted by any military. Used by the Air Force a little bit, uh, especially in Southeast Asia, uh, and then used by a few other units from there on, and then eventually replaced by the XM16E1. And this model has probably some of the most unique features out of any of the uh, early yeah, variants. Yeah, they're, they're really cool, just a basic, simple, yeah. simple design. It's, uh, it's straight to the point, and I'll go through some of the features on here that are unique uh, to the 601. Of course, here to the side, we do have the classic Waffle Magazine. I will say you can purchase a replica of that yes, at Brownells. We do have those now. <laughs> um, I'll start up front, and even the front sight base varied a lot. Uh, this one is the original cast style, uh, and you can tell because there's not, uh, let me turn around, there's not a big flashing or a forging uh, flash mark right here on the rear. Uh, this ear tier piece is a little squared off, and a good sign of an early front sight base is you can see the up mark to adjust the front sight is actually raised versus engraved or stamped into the front sight base. Pretty unique there. Uh, now you can't tell from the exterior, but this is a one in 14 twist barrel. Um, and then moving on back, you have the classic triangle handguards. This is the first iteration of a gun yeah. with this handguard uh, setup. Now these early ones, they were a fiberglass and you can see right here, there's a nick in it. And you can see the actual color of the material is brown. And then this green is actually a paint uh, over the top. Um, so if you want your Brownell 601 to match this perfectly, go ahead and get some paint just like this, uh, paint it over, or get some of our brown furniture. Um, and here's the, uh, the classic flat slip ring that was carried over to the M1681. Uh, but then right here, you've got the triangle charging handle, which if you go to pick this up today and you're used to an AR-15, <laughs> you can tell why they got Trying rid of it. Yeah, this, yeah. This you pretty rough pull back. You can't do the one-handed maneuver. Uh, you got to kind of pinch it uh, to retract. Uh, surely you notice the bright, shiny chrome bulk carrier yep. group, uh, which is very distinctive on this rifle. Now here's a really tiny detail that changed, uh, and it's the ejection port cover. You can see right here, it's got this uh, square piece uh, that later changed on the A2, uh, and actually the A1 actually went to a smaller uh, portion. But even this assembly is slightly different than the A1. This one has a roll pin holding the D10 in place. Mm -hmm. The A1 has a C-clip, uh, so pretty unique on that. Uh, and then over here, you've got uh, your rear takedown and your safety selector. Both have a little uh, dent in them. Uh, that was later changed, so I don't know why they put that in there. But Modification, sim simplified the process. Yeah, you don't need to put that there, apparently, yeah. for it to function. Uh, and then looking up front, you have the non-captive uh, front pin. Uh, slab side lower receiver. This one's a little marred up, unfortunately. Uh, you have the classic uh, M16 grip. Uh, should call it a 601 grip, yes. not an A1 grip, because this was <laughs> that style before. Uh, your trigger guard stayed the same. That's the same trigger guard you'll find on an yeah. M4 carbine today. And on the opposite side, the selector and the uh, rear take on have that divot as well. And then the bolt catch. This is very distinctive to the 601. It's kind of cut off at the bottom compared to what you have today or I guess they added it. Uh, there's no raised portion at the bottom, so you, it's a little bit more difficult to reach in there and, and lock the bolt open. Uh, and then otherwise, you've got the roll pin at the rear, which was driven through the buffer tube to keep it from loosening, which later found to not really be that necessary. Yeah, they didn't need that at all. More, a lot of times uh, in de on depot level servicing, they would end up busting the back of that receiver because they were just trying to- They didn't know that was right, in there. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, it's definitely works, it's not gonna keep it from coming out, but once you have the stock on and this screw in place, doesn't matter. Uh, and then at the rear we have a 601 or a Type D style stock with a sling swivel, and then of course no trap door on it. Um, of course this doesn't have a forward assist, no shell deflector, yep. this is way before anybody uh, came up with those contraptions. Uh, in fact, in, in this auction, they actually have one of the guns with the first four yes. assist, that gold yep. plate. It's right plate. behind us over there. Yeah. Now, another thing on these, these had no fence on them. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about, the fence, what's, uh, you see no fence, partial fence, and full fence. What's yeah, so uh, the, that's referring to the lower receiver. So this is a no fence. Uh, and when we say fence, that's no fencing around the magazine release. 
Uh, the later XM16E1 added a partial fence, which is a raised hump right here. Uh, and that was mainly there uh, for the detent and spring mechanism to keep the front pin captive. Uh, later they found, after a lot of use, that you can inadvertently bump that mag release just on patrol with this uh, and drop your loaded magazine into the, uh, the water or marsh, wherever you're at, in Southeast Asia. Uh, so then they went to a full fence on the M16A1 to protect that mag release from uh, inadvertently dropping your mag. Now there's this, there's also one more distinctive marking. Mm -hmm. It's really tough to see, and it's actually on the Brownells lowers from Nodak's bud, um, but there's a cross right there, a plus sign. Uh, that was on the original 601. Mm -hmm. I don't know personally the backstory there, but if you're looking for an original type lower, they have that right there. There's a few other nuances. The, uh, the uh, rear sight drum isn't quite the same as an A1, just the markings in it. Uh, all slight design changes they made along the way to make things uh, simpler. Yeah. yeah, that's the way that you learn. Just start in with the basic parts and see what works, what doesn't work, and then just start improving along the way, and they have hit it. Yeah, this is a pretty darn robust gun out of the gate. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, the military yeah. decided to screw with things <laughs> and that's what got them into trouble later on. I should say too, it does have the distinctive uh, uh, duckbill flash yep. hider up front. Uh, really thin prongs on it. Uh, effective flash hider, uh, but definitely not GI proof. Uh, there's uh, reports of GIs liking to pry open ammo cans or other things <laughs> with this and they would uh, snap off. So not so much of a you know, a brush catcher, yeah. more of a GI uh, stupid yeah. catcher. And if they hit the ground at a certain angle, it will bend that up oh, yeah. real quick. I've seen that on Might a Might be a point of impact problem. Yeah, <laughs> yep, very much. Now this one right here, this is uh, select fire. Yes. It? yes, so this, this is, is a machine is a gun. Uh, if you're in one of those uh, great states that allows you to purchase a class three type item, uh, you could actually purchase this one uh, at Rock Island Auction. Uh, so it's up for grabs. Yep. So that's the Colt Model 601 available at uh, Rock Island Auction. Thanks to them again for letting us check this piece out. Uh, and next time we'll check out another gun from the Volt.